Amen. Good morning. Happy Lord's Day, my dear brothers and sisters. Are you happy? It doesn't sound like it. Are you happy? Of course. Because I know that my Redeemer lives. Amen. And that we will live with him eternally in heaven. Can I get an amen? All right. Just... First of all, I want to thank the Lord for um, another day that He had given us and for the opportunity that uh, once again I am before you to share the message of the Lord this morning. And also, I want to thank God for the opportunity that He had given me uh, the past few days that I had been with the other. Uh, members of the Lord's Church uh, at the uh, West uh, East, sorry, West Coast Preachers and Leadership and Leaders Forum. Uh, it was held at Fairfield, hosted by uh, Bay North um, Church of Christ, and uh, co-hosted by another congregation. And I was fortunate enough to meet some of the uh, brothers and sisters from different city. Okay. Now, in our previous lessons, we talk about the bond servant, right? We talk about you and I being a bond servant of the Lord and what is all about being a servant. We talk about how these people became bond servants. And most of them probably does not like um, they're being a bond servant, you know, because their servitude were probably burdensome. They were a servant because it was against their will, because they have no choice. And then eventually their choice will only come to them on the seventh year, where they are free uh, to go or choose to stay with their masters. And then when they choose to stay with their masters, it was because of love okay so their love blossom over the years and then their life now becomes a total commitment to their master our spiritual life my dear brothers and sisters is like that it takes time it takes process over the years our priorities in life were probably not our lord jesus christ but eventually along the way we met our lord and decided to be a true bond servant just like when Apostle Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Okay. Now, on that time, on the road to Damascus, he became a bond servant. And we know who Apostle Paul was before he became Paul. Okay. And his name was Saul. Now, when he found the Lord, Jesus Christ, on his way to Damascus, he fell in love with our Lord Jesus Christ. And he left everything. For his master. Okay. Or, you know, sometimes when we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, we are not in a level of such maturity where we take seriously our Christianity. We are like what the Bible calls babe. Okay. Then we came to a point that we truly developed that maturity and put Jesus at the center of our lives. Now, Jesus now becomes your master, and you now become his servant. And that process was because of your love for the master. Question, who wants to be great? Who wants to be great? What are Travis raising? All right. The only way to be great in God's eyes is the path of servanthood. That is the only way. If you and I want to be great, we must take that path. 
Apostle Paul took the path of servanthood. And we are now talking about Apostle Paul. We are talking about his ministry. We are talking about his life, his faithfulness. He was long gone, but still we're talking about Apostle Paul. His, und his undying love for Jesus Christ. He is now among the greatest because he took the path of servanthood. In Mark chapter 10, 43, Jesus said, instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. So this morning, since we are all a servant of the Lord, we're going to talk about the heart of a servant. We're going to talk about your heart. We're going to dissect our hearts this morning. Now, Jesus called us to be a true servant. His disciples, in Mark chapter 10, the verse that we read a while ago, they were discussing who among them would be the greatest. When Jesus saw them discussing, Jesus told them that only the way, the only way towards greatness is servanthood. To be a servant of the other. They have to take that path. We are to take that path. So the very heart of servanthood is love. As we say it in Tagalog, since today is February, we call it Feb Ibig. And Pag Ibig is love. So Feb Ibig, February, is heart about love. So we call it Feb Ibig. So love. Okay, love. And when we talk about love, the heart of a servant, number one, should be love for the master. Okay. Love for the master. John chapter 14, verse 31, part of our scripture reading. Jesus said, but so that the world may know that I love the Father. I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Now, I want all of us to understand this important thing. The obedience of Jesus coming down from heaven and accepting the role of a sacrificial lamb was only and only because of his love for his father. That's the only reason one reason why he came down because he truly loved his father. He was obedient not because of fear. No. He was obedient to the father not because he feared the father. No. But because he loved the father. He was obedient not because he wants something in return for doing his obedience from the father. No. He was doing it because he loved the father. From the moment God blueprinted, God planned in his mind the plan of salvation, Jesus already accepted his role as a sacrificial lamb in the plan of salvation. Because first and foremost, he loved his father. Now, and look at what the text says. Jesus said, I do exactly as the Father commanded me. Whatever the Father told him, he will do it for one reason only. It is because of love. And by being obedient to all his Father's command, he was showing to all of us the true meaning of love. He is showing to all of us that he really loved the Father. And that is very much important. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 to 11, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and in earth and under earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You see, when Jesus obeyed his father's commands to go down here and 
take the form of a servant and die on the cross, look at what God did to him. What God did to him, that what, number one, God exalted him to the highest place. Number two, God gave him name above every name. Number three, every knee will bow down to him. And number four, every tongue acknowledge him. You see, Jesus, he knew that these things will be given to him at the end of his mission. He knew that. But I want all of us to understand this again, that Jesus did not obey his father because of this. He did not obey the commands of his father to go down to die for you and I because of this. He went down, took the form of a servant because he loved his father. That's it. Because of his love for the father. His motivation was his love for the father. He obeyed because he wants us to follow in his example. He is showing us the way what true love is. The way for true love. He was showing us his example that everything that we must do must be rooted in love. That's why Jesus was showing us the real hearts of a servant and that is all about love. Another question. Why are you all a Christian? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Why am I a Christian? Why am I sitting here every Sunday? Why am I serving the Lord? Why am I a Christian in the first place? You see, the answer to that question is paramount to our relationship with Christ. You must know the very reason why you clothe yourself with the name of our Lord Christ. Because if you do not know the answer to that question, my dear brothers and sisters, there is something wrong with you. I'll be honest with you. So the answer to that question is paramount to your relationship with Christ. This will define, your answer will define your servanthood. Why am I telling you that? I will tell you my story. I will tell you my story. When I started studying the Bible, I learned about God's love. And the first thing I memorized, and probably you too memorized this verse, is John 3.16. Right? All of us, probably even while we are sleeping, we all can memorize John 3.16. Okay. But later on, the fear of death, okay, the thought of death, the thought of going to hell, it dawned on me that my so-called Christianity was motivated more of the reward of heaven. You get that? My Christianity was motivated more of me going to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Okay. Now you ask, Brother Mike, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with thinking of heaven? What's wrong with your motivation of heaven? It's terribly wrong. I will tell you why. You see, I was obeying Jesus because, listen to this, I love myself more than Jesus Christ. The motivation of myself going to heaven because I was so afraid of myself going to heaven that I love myself more than my master, Jesus Christ. Well, I love Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong. I love him. At that point, I love my Lord. Don't get me wrong. But it is just that I love myself more than him. That is the truth. That is the truth. That is the truth. My obedience was motivated more about the reward rather than my love for my master. You get the point? You get the point? Then I understood what Jesus meant when he said in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, if we truly learn to love Jesus first, then you will come to love everybody 
naturally. Jesus said, if you love me, or if you love your father or mother more than you love me, it says there, you are not worthy of being mine. Back then, I felt not worthy of being a servant of our Lord Jesus Christ because I love myself more than Jesus Christ. I was a Christian. I am a Christian back then. I call myself a Christian back then. But I never understood what Christianity is all about. I never understood what servanthood is all about. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. You see, if you love yourself more than Jesus Christ, you are not worthy of being called a Christian. If you love other people more than Jesus Christ, then you are not worthy to belong to Christ. Christianity is about loving obedience to God. It is about loving obedience to God, serving God first and foremost. Agree? Do you agree? Now, that's why again in John 14, 31, the verse we read a while ago, by doing exactly what his father tells him to do, Jesus was showing his love for his father. Jesus was a servant of the father when he was here on earth, when he was like you and I. Now, likewise, therefore, we must do the same. Exactly what our master Jesus Christ tells us to do. And in so doing, we are showing to the people around us our love for Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commands. The question now is, do you love Jesus Christ? Many people will say, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I love Jesus Christ, Brother Mike. Do you love him more than yourself? When these passages, when all of these things came to my wisdom, when I understood all, of, all the meaning of this, the meaning of real servanthood, change my life. Now clearly Jesus tells us that you're not serving God if you are not serving God rather you are serving the devil. Okay. In Matthew 6 24 no one can serve two masters for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. Here is the thing. There's no third party involved. There's just two parties. Either you are a servant of God or you are a servant of the devil. There's no in-between. Don't look for in-between. Don't look for in-between. If you're not serving God, then you are serving the devil. If you're serving the devil, then you're not serving God. There's no in-between. You choose which side you are. A true servanthood is motivated by love alone to our Lord Jesus Christ. Once you master this rule, my dear brothers and sisters, everything will go smoothly in your service to God. You will become Christ-centered. I've noticed before that I was not growing in maturity. I was a Christian. Well, I, I thought I was a Christian. I called myself back then a Christian. I was baptized into Christ, having fellowship with my brothers and sisters, reading the Bible. But I was motivated not by my love for Jesus Christ, but my love for myself. I want to save myself. See, when I learned about all of this, or before I learned about this, I'm not at peace. There's no contentment. I was not happy. Even if I call myself a Christian back then, because the motivation is not love. I did not understand before the real meaning of humility. 
I know what humility is. I can define to you what humility is, but I did not understand what humility is, which corresponds to selflessness kind of love, which is not thinking less of yourself, but rather it is thinking of yourself less. I was thinking and loving more of myself and what I can get from serving Jesus rather than thinking and loving more of Jesus and what I can give to his service and to his kingdom. That's why I was serving Jesus the wrong way. I was serving him the wrong way. Now when I got the meaning of real servanthood, it all changed. I found out that it is all about Jesus Christ. It is all about my love for the master. That the motivation should always be and must be only love for the master. Now doing God's command, when I learned those things, obeying God, doing God's command, they are now not burdensome. It becomes light because you love what you are doing and you love the one giving the commands. I fell in love with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I fell in love with him the first time, but I fall out of love. And then I truly fell in love with him the second time. As they say, what did they say? Love is sweeter the second time around. Now I'm loving the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is what Jesus meant when he said that his burden is light in Matthew. Now, when he said that my burden is light. Because when you love him so much, your service to him is not only rush, but your service to him will become light. Because your motivation of serving him is love. Because you are doing it out of love. You know that feeling when you are asked to do something that you don't like doing. You know that feeling? When you are asked to do something that you are not, that you don't like doing, but are just forced to do it. There's a hard feelings, right? Because there's no love in it. But when you love doing, because you love doing it, because you love serving the one who's giving the order, You will be serving with all smile because you love what you are doing. But when you do something that you love, again, you'll be happy. You will be satisfied. Even when you get tired of doing it, it's okay. Because love will compensate for that tired body of yours, for that tiredness of yours. You see, now I am happy. Now I am at peace. I am contented. And just loving my Savior and my Master, Jesus Christ. When our motivation in our Christianity is love, we will be more serving. We will be more giving. We will be more searching for the lost souls. We will be more sharing of the gospel. We will be more forgiving. And we will be more loving. Once you master that, it is a game changer, as they say. Your focus on the reward becomes lesser and lesser because your focus is now more on Jesus Christ. But don't get me wrong, you will have that reward in heaven someday. In Ephesians chapter 3, And that the Messiah may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width and height and depth of God's love and to know the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge so you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Brethren and friends, this is really important. When we now come to understand 
and learn that when our faith is deeply rooted and firmly established in love, only then that we will truly comprehend God's love. Why he gave his only son, Jesus, for all of us. And we will also understand the Messiah's love. The reason why he accepted the role of a sacrificial lamb. The reason why he was so obedient to the Father, even to the point of death, death on the cross. You see, by having that pure love as our motivation in accepting Jesus Christ, our Lord and Master, we will understand the reason for your calling. You will understand the reason why God called you and the role that we have to take, the role that you have to take in his kingdom without anyone constantly reminding you of your service to him. Because that love, Jesus, that love for Jesus that is in you will push you. Because that love of Jesus that is in you will motivate you daily to do what is required of you to please your master. You know, but we might say, Brother Mike, I know already the reason why God sent his son. Brother Mike, I know already why Jesus accepted his role. Brother Mike, I know already my calling. You see, brethren and friends, there is a fine line. There is a fine line between knowing and understanding. And this is where I failed before. Let me repeat that. There is a fine line between knowing and understanding. Many of us know. Many of us knew. But still, many of us don't understand. You see, knowing is static. Knowing is stationary. It is fixed, referring to discrete facts. And these facts is without placing, you know, taking these facts without placing too much or careful thoughts on the matter that is in front of you that it may be connected to or part of something else, or it may have a totally different meaning altogether. That is knowing. While understanding is active, understanding is you engage, your mind engage, you analyze, and you place the facts in context, forming a bigger picture and getting the real meaning behind it. And probably acting on it when there is a call for action. Now to further understand the meaning between knowing and understanding. Because I want all of us to understand this. To learn this. Have you seen the viral photo years ago of Prince William? Apparently giving that finger? Have you seen that photo? Nobody seen that photo? Nobody seen that photo of Prince William? Went viral a few years ago? Okay, let me show this. Let me show the photo to you. But don't be shy. Brother Charles, don't let me packing home. Don't let me grab my bags and Go home and pack home. When I show this to you. Nobody seen this video, uh, this photo? This is what learning is all about. This is what knowing, sorry. This is what knowing is all about. When someone posted this photo of Prince William, people hated him. People hated him. They want to crucify him. Why? See? The danger of just knowing and understanding. You see, knowing is when you're given something 
static. You don't engage. You don't analyze. You don't think. You don't ask questions. You just take it as it is. When they showed the photo of Prince William, this photo, people thought, wow, this guy is rude. Let's crucify him. People were bashing him, calling him different names, so many names. They did not understand. Their mind was not engaged. They did not ask questions. Is he really giving that? Is he really doing that? Is he really showing that to many people? You see, but when someone posted this, what happened to all those who wants to crucify him? See, understanding, my dear brothers and sisters, is we must engage, you must analyze, you must understand, like being what Christianity is all about, what being a servant is all about. Christianity servanthood is not all about, it's not about you. It's about your master, Jesus Christ. It's about pleasing him, not pleasing you. It's not about what you can get, but what you can give. That is servanthood. That is Christianity. You see, I failed because I did not really put too much understanding of what my calling is all about. I just know, but I did not understand. When I understood that my calling is all about my master, Jesus Christ, and not about me, again, it was a game changer. I became a better Christian, a better servant of Jesus Christ. I thought I was better before, but I was wrong. I became better. I understand that heaven is waiting for me, yes. And you should understand that heaven is waiting for you. But my thought is focused on how to be better to serve my master while living here on earth, by loving him every day, which brings me to my second point. The heart of a servant is loving the master by loving your fellow. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as ransom for many. Jesus showed his love to his Father by being obedient, and by showing his love to this fellow, by giving his life as a ransom for all of us. Likewise, we must transcend that love to our fellow by giving them the gospel no, ma no matter what the cost is. Apostle Paul did just that. You see, he went to different places not knowing what will happen to him. Reason and hardships was waiting for him. He considered his life worth nothing. Only His only aim is to finish the race and to complete the task of the Lord that has given him. And that task is testifying the good news of God's grace. You see, Apostle Paul's love and passion for his master, Jesus Christ, was so powerful enough that it compelled him with the Holy Spirit, of course, to go to a place not knowing what will become of him, what will happen to him. Though he knew that prison and hardship awaits him every time. And this testimony of Paul was so powerful. Listen, he said that he considered his life worth nothing to him. Wow. Amazing. Amazing, isn't it? He considered his life worth nothing to him. This is what serving Jesus with the truest sense of the word love means. And it must transcend to your fellow. Total selflessness. Now, why did Paul consider himself or his self worth, his life worth nothing to him? In Colossians chapter 3, 3 and 4, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, 
then you also will appear with him in glory. You see, because when Paul accepted his master, Jesus Christ, into his life, he died with Jesus. Do you know that you died with Jesus? Do you know that you died with Jesus when you accepted him through baptism? Paul knew. He knew then, you know, notice the word real life. He knew that real life is not this one because this is temporary. He knew that real life is hidden with whom? Hidden with Christ in God. Notice that Paul, he stresses that this life is not real. Temporary. What is to come in heaven, that would be your real life. Eternal. Now, another question. Why in heaven is real life? Why is it in heaven? that real life is? The answer is there. Because Christ is there. And who is Christ? Paul said, who is your life? Christ is your life. That's why Paul considered himself, his life, nothing to him. Because he already died with Jesus Christ and he knew that he will appear Again with his master in heaven someday. Now, if you so love Jesus that much, and you know that heaven is waiting for you, what is there to be afraid of? Did you get that? What is there to be afraid of? If your life is hidden with your master, Jesus Christ, what are you afraid of? If you so love your master that much, not even that can separate you from the love of God. You know, only you, only yourself can separate you and can severe your relationship with your master, Jesus Christ. Remember that. Now, what was the aim of Apostle Paul? The aim of Apostle Paul, he said, to finish the race. That is his faithfulness till the end. And he said to complete the task given to him. And that task is testifying the good news of God's grace. Paul's love for Jesus was so strong that he was willing to give his life not only for Jesus, but also for other people. Just so he could bring the good news to all of us and be saved as well. As we love Christ, we must therefore love others by bringing the gospel to them. When you love Jesus so much, it becomes natural to you to find ways to share the gospel, no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing. It becomes a part of your character. You must think how you can spread the gospel. We must not be a couch potato. You know, make it a part of your life to share the gospel. Make it your goal to share Jesus Christ regularly. Now, we know that people have lots of excuses. And one thing, one thing they, one thing of their excuses is that, you know, brother Mike, I don't know what to teach. I don't know what to tell others about Jesus Christ, about the good news. Okay. But here's the good news. Here's the good news for anyone who believed that kind of thinking. Just tell them your story. Just tell them your story, why you accepted Jesus Christ and why you're still his servant up to this day. Present to them. Present them with what helped to shape your faith. That's just about it. You know, a few days ago, I met an elderly woman. And I was sharing the gospel to her. And we talk about Christ. And in our conversation, she shared to me why she became a servant, a Christian. You know, she does not need to know about proper hermeneutics. 
she does not need to know about apologetics and other biblical stuff that are learned in Bible school. She only needs to know and share about Jesus and his cross. See, that's what you need to share. To share Jesus. To share your experience with Jesus Christ. My ambition has always been to preach the gospel. Where the name of Christ has never been heard. Rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. You see, that was Paul's ambition. To preach the gospel to those who had not heard the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now ask yourself about this. Have you ever envisioned yourself of bringing the name of Jesus to your fellow? Or what people call now the unchurched. The lost on a regular basis. If you love Jesus enough, it must be your goal to bring the gospel anywhere you go. Whatever you're doing, if you have that opportunity, go grab that opportunity and share the gospel. You see, Paul said, I, Paul, the servant of Christ, am here in jail because of you for preaching that you Gentiles are a part of God's house. When your love for Jesus is so great, you will think of those lost souls. Here's another question. Did someone share the gospel to you? Raise your hand. Did someone share the gospel to you? Or did you just find it yourself? Or found it yourself? Come on, raise your hand. Did someone share the gospel to you? Those who said yes. You see, almost everybody, almost everybody, there is this someone that shared the gospel to you. Why am I asking you this? Now think about this. What could have been your situation now if someone did not love Jesus Christ enough and not shared the gospel to you? Where would you be right now? Where would I be right now? Probably I will not be standing here with you. I will not be meeting all of you. And you will not be meeting me. You see? Now think about that. Think about that. Someone shared the gospel to you. You see, you and I, if someone never shared the gospel to all of us. We are still in our sins. We will die in our sins. Right? So we must love Jesus enough to do the same to others. Come on. You must love your master enough so that you will get up, you will get out, and you will share the name of Jesus. Come on. Right. If someone did not share the gospel to you, you will not have a place in heaven. Right. The question, what are we? You see, we are inside this building fulfilling our obedience to God. As a church, we come together every Sunday. We worship Him. We encourage one another. We feed the flocks. But outside, that is where the lost souls are. Outside, see, we show our love for Jesus by obeying His commands and bringing His name to them. Just like Jesus showed His love to the Father by obeying His Father's command. If your Christianity is based on loving yourself more than Jesus, I hope this lesson will make you think again. If your Christianity is based more on what you can get out of your service to him rather than what you can give to his kingdom, I hope this lesson will make you think again. If your Christianity is more focused on yourself rather than focused on the lost souls, I hope 
this lesson will make you think again. If your Christianity is more focused on talking about the latest news, the latest fads, and the latest fashions to your friends, rather than sharing with them Jesus Christ and the gospel. I hope this lesson will make you think again. If you are truly, or if you truly love God, you will come to love those whom he loved. And he loved everybody. And you will love everybody. Brethren and friends, if you are truly serving God, you are serving the devil. Brothers and sisters, share the gospel. Don't let it just sit idly in you. Don't let the gospel waste inside of you. Again, let's get up. Let us go out and spread the word. Now, my dear friends, those who are joining us in Zoom, we are here to help you. I love my master, Jesus Christ, so much. That's why I'm reaching out to you. I'm talking to you. Because I love you. I was commissioned by Jesus to preach. In its purest form and simplest manner, I know. And I think that's the way it should be. In its purest form. Finally, I will leave you with the words of Apostle Paul. But I will rejoice even if I lose my life. Pouring it out like a liquid offering to God. Just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. Brothers and sisters, the message is yours. It's all up to you what you're going to do with the gospel. It's not what you know. It's what you do with what you know. God bless everyone.